Uh, now, let's talk about uh, the year for Lifeline. I mean, you couldn't have had a, a bigger year and strangely, you know, you all hope for the day where there's zero calls, but the bushfires were setting records and coronavirus has even supercharged those. Give me an idea what an average day is like for Lifeline. Well, it used to be about 2,500 calls a day and that was pretty significant. That's about 900,000 calls a day, which in and of itself is extreme. But what we've seen now is the bushfires, which really kicked in in terms of their severity back in December, we saw our calls increase from 2,500 a day to 2,900 a day. Uh, we've seen our calls get as high as 3,200 a day. Wow during the coronavirus, and um, we're regularly seeing days around and over 3,000 calls a day, and that's enormous for us. If you extrapolate that out uh, to what an annualised figure might look like, you're talking about 1.1 million telephone calls. So that's about a 20% increase for us, which is extraordinary. And loneliness, I mean, we've talked about this so many times, but it is such a profound issue for people. How is loneliness bearing itself out in a time of, of physical distancing, not only emotional distancing? Well, massively, Paul. It's probably the biggest and most identifiable thing. We're seeing two things. Those who are already lonely are very, very lonely. There's a severity in their loneliness. And some who haven't been lonely before are lonely for the first time. So it's tragic to say this, but it's true. In the first place, you know, before we saw the virus and, and um, the bushfires, for a number of people, lifeline was the only voice they spoke to all day or all week in the first place and you know let's just think of how lonely that is so we've seen the loneliness levels increase uh, and to almost alarming rates in some instances the other thing we've seen is anxiety poor and what's interesting and i've spoken to a number of our centres today knowing i was going to talk to you tonight i wanted to speak to some of our centres on the ground to see exactly what they're feeling and it's interesting People aren't talking over the last two weeks about coronavirus directly and specifically. It's almost now baked into their anxiety and baked into their loneliness. But I tell you what, they're very scared about the future. They're very worried about their finances, about their jobs and about the future. They're now really shifting to that position. And as you said earlier tonight, um, once you get on the unemployment queue, it's very hard to get off it, particularly if you're older. And in some cases, people leave what they were doing before, uh, in this case, a recession, effectively, and never go back to that place and have to start all over again in terms of not just a different job but a different career. So there's a really high level of anxiety and concern about uh, people's future, about their financial security, about their job security, and it's also coming through in people getting quite angry, very short tempers, very short um, fuses when it comes to dealing with the day-to-day. Do you hope that this sort of information is being fed into the state and territory leaders at that national cabinet? Because, you know, I talk about I believe the economic curve now is as is is more urgent than the, the the virus curve. Not because the virus curve has been defeated forever. No, it hasn't. But but you know, all of the different reasons that I've stated multiple times. I know the federal government has been very forthright with mental health and mental health during this time, but it feels like they need to hear from people like yeah. you. It feels like they need to know, hey, guys, like a million people are going to call us, an awful lot of them are about lonely, and a lot of people are scared about uh, finances. Find a way to go back to work. Well, every death's a tragedy, of course, it is, and every infection is a matter of concern. But what we're, what we're hearing, what we're seeing with people is they're not worried about getting the virus. Five weeks ago, you were legitimately able to worry about getting the virus because it was growing day by day and you could see on the look on people's faces on TV every day who were talking about it. We didn't know where this was going. All you had to do was look at overseas and think this could get incredibly difficult in Australia. Now, we've taken extraordinary measures and they have clearly dropped the curve and what we're seeing now are numbers that are something to be proud of, frankly. We'll look back on these events and think we did the right thing. But people are now looking to their future beyond the coronavirus. And I guess the one thing we know for sure is not... We don't know when this is going to win, but we know we're going to end in a recession. We're going to come out of this in a recession. So our view, Paul, is that the, the physicality of this will stop at some stage... But the stress on people's mental health will go on for years and years, just like the bushfires. I mean, we should never forget, and God bless you for mentioning it, there's still are people down the south coast of New South Wales and around the country living in caravans, and they will be for another 12 months or more until they get their house built. So 
Um, that's one group of people who've not been hot, hit once with a baseball bat. They've been hit twice with a baseball bat in six months. And then there's the rest of the country in these extraordinary circumstances. So this is not going to end when the physical side of it ends. There's no doubt about this. This will continue. And the sooner people can see some light at the end of the tunnel on whether they'll be able to get their job back is quite important. I mean, n none of us should uh, ignore the significance of JobKeeper for people who otherwise would have had nothing or, or straight on the dole queue. Absolutely. Um, we should not ignore that. But it's, for many people, it's not what they were earning six weeks ago. And if you have just bought a house, you're worried about how you're going to pay it off. If you've just um, uh, got a whole lot of credit card bills you have to knock off, well, you can't do that now. And on and on the list goes. There was no schedule for this. This wasn't in the diary to happen in March and April and, and go for a couple of months or a couple of years. So people were caught not ready for it financially, and people have really been knocked about. So the sooner they can get an understanding that the economy will come back to normal and that jobs will begin to reappear, that shops will open, and on and on the list goes, the better it will be for people's anxiety and their loneliness. And the point you make about loneliness at the beginning is right, Paul. We've been told very clearly, and we all agree, that social distancing or physical distancing really mm. is good for our physical health. But I tell you what, for some people, it's really bad for their mental health. Well, I look forward to when I get the chance to give your wife uh, a beautiful hug, you as well, those incredible children, mate. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. All the best to everyone who volunteers and is part of it. If you're watching us and you've got the ability to donate, do so to Lifeline. And if you are concerned, you call 13 11 14. Great man, thank you. Good. Thanks, mate. Go Yankees. <laughs> Go Yankees. Good man. Thank you.